one month ago we started with the students of CIF to prepare a simulation game on the future of the European Union. And the aim of the simulation game is to simulate council negotiations about important European topics. were like different countries, so we had to, to speak uh, between each other and um, find the solution in, uh, in different areas, so in three areas, so the security uh, policy, the immigration and also about the institution. The students have prepared articles, so to say legal articles for each of those uh, topics and have discussed them online. But of course, like with such contentious issues, they could not reach consensus. Uh, only by chatting with each other. And today is, uh, so to say, uh, the highlight and uh, the most important part of this simulation as all of them come together uh, in real, in person, and they are trying to find council conclusions on all three topics that have been discussed. My role was uh, President Charles Michel, so I, I, I would say that I felt the responsibility to try to find a compromise and uh, I, I learned a lot uh, on this issue and of course uh, the, the first day was really hard and long. We just uh, we discussed the uh, social policy and also the EU reform institution that are really sensitive uh, issue for European Union and was uh, was really hard to try to find a compromise also to try to, uh, to respect in the same time the EU value and also the uh, country position. So today I was uh, representing Denmark. I was Mette Frederiksen as you can see. Um, it was a really complicated position because it's a very sensitive one because Denmark is not part of the Eurozone, uh, which means that considering monetary policy, they will disagree with a lot of things. Um, Denmark is also a country that likes to keep a lot of sovereignty for itself and does not want to delegate. Uh, but as was uh, seen in the very heated conversations of today, most countries believe that the EU is built on cooperation, on coordination, and thus it is hard for Denmark to keep its position um, because it has to do so in a very diplomatic way. So without shocking other countries, showing that we are still, we still want to cooperate. We're totally going towards social benefits, but we don't want to do it the same way you do. We want to keep our own benefits. I was like representing Frédéric Bernard, the head of state of the Council of the European Council. And I tried to manage with the structure for the debates. For example, like it's really hard like when people like don't speak. It's really important to allow everybody to speak and like to respect the time. Like two minutes each, for each delegate seems like quite necessary. For us, uh, the main point is immigration because uh, it's a very important conflict. In our country, we're taking full responsibility for it and other countries are not willing to take part of the European project of being um, more uh, towards solidarity. So I do expect for tomorrow for the countries that are more reticent in this aspect to be more flexible and understanding. So really Denmark is, I think, trying to divert the attention from uh, further integration and further cooperation for the European Union. What Denmark wants is that we work on issues that are now problematic, such as migration, uh, security, climate change, uh, increasing research and increasing funds towards research. These are things we believe in and we want to stand for. Um, and we think it's more important to do more efficiently what we are doing rather than trying to expand the areas of uh, work of the European Union into other things that we might not be able to monitor uh, properly that we need to start setting new rules for, make more laws. We 
believe that actually, uh, you know, the, so the social policies should remain a competence of the national governments and it shouldn't be enforced from the EU level. Uh, up until then, we were in accord until Germany decided to um, enforce that clause. Um, but I think um, in the next round, it would actually uh, be positive because I think it's just uh, you know negotiations like the first day of school, the first day of negotiations like the first day of school. So I think we'll get along uh, as the negotiation proceeds. We actually have proposed a model in which those countries that are not willing to foster immigrants to give funds to those countries that are suffering from a more acute immigration such as Spain, Greece or Italy. So we do expect that every country has something to give to the European project, especially on integration and immigration. Uh, what was interesting for me was that I learned so much more about Denmark. I didn't know a lot of the things uh, that Denmark was standing for. And I was even maybe by playing the role more convinced with a lot of their arguments that I wasn't. I would have never thought that I would agree with them. And by taking this position, I realized that maybe they do have some points. The aim is of course to understand the topics that are being discussed, to also understand the institutional um, setting that lays behind it, but um, it's also all about soft skills, so learning to really negotiate in such situations, being able to, uh, to, to uh, work on detailed legal texts together in different delegations. That's all part of it, as well as negotiation. I think what really makes a good negotiator is about like really listening to each other and trying to find a common solution or a common goal and really like fight for this idea. So for the future of the EU, I think every member state like has an idea what to do and what to achieve. And we have to like really focus on these big goals. I uh, try to, uh, to use the, the mediation instrument, especially the, uh, uh, at the end uh, when I try to, um, uh, to invite the country to be more open to the solidarity, to try to change their position uh, in, respect for, uh, in respect of European Union value. And uh, I will say that I use, of course, some strategic uh, and tactical issue for try to uh, give, give them the possibility to be open uh, to uh, the solidarity and uh, try to find a compromise, I would say. I think I'm uh, much happier than I expected because there are some countries that are um, more uh, towards national sovereignty. So I'm pretty happy because they're being more flexible than we expected. And we are also being more flexible than expected. So I think it's been easier uh, to reach a consensus even if we're giving away many important points for us. The, the phrase of Europe is like unity and diversity and some countries want to keep this diversity because like it's beautiful to be united in diversity and like the, a lot of countries were like able to compromise and it, I was really happy with that but sometimes it's really hard. Yes I have a better understanding of how negotiations go on, why they take so long and why it's so difficult for countries to agree. I will say the most important European value is the cooperation of course and not only, uh, um, not only inside the European Union with each country but also uh, 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 I will say that we can we can say that European model is a model for uh, international community.
when we talk about the cooperation. So I will say that cooperation, I think, is the most important value of a building.